Transmission Control Protocol slash Internet Protocol, or TCP IP as it's known, is a layer three to four protocol suite that uses network addressing and packet routing to basically package different applications data and transmit it across the internet. TCP IP allows for applications to send data in a way that protects data integrity, in a way that establishes a session with agreed upon standards and agreed upon parameters. TCP works at session layer four of the OSI model in the transport layer, and IP works in layer three, of course, in the network layer. TCP IP on its own includes integrity protection because you have that handshake process. I'd tell you a joke about TCP IP, but I'd have to shake your hand first. So the protocols in the TCP IP model work in conjunction with one another. They allow data that's used at the application layer to be understood and be transmitted and then translated, re-unpackaged at the destination. A lot of protocols for communication like HTTP, web traffic, uses TCP IP, email protocols like post office protocol, IMAP, uh, SMMP, simple mail transport protocol, all those use TCP IP. Let's go ahead and take a look at some TCP IP uh, packets in use here. So if we take a look, we have, here's some TCP IP packets we've pulled up here in Wireshark. And we have a handshake process that involves first a synchronization packet or SYN packet, then a SYNAC packet, a synchronization acknowledgement packet sent back from the target back to us. And then we would send back an acknowledgement packet. So we would send the synchronization packet saying, hey, I'd like to establish a session with you uh, with, the, with these parameters and we'd list the parameters. And then we'd receive back from the target. Maybe that's a website. Maybe that's an email client. Okay, I've received your parameters. Let's agree to communicate using you know, this protocol, this type of encryption, etc. And then we would acknowledge that we received that SYNAC packet with an ACK packet back. Now, there's certain types of denial of service attacks that take advantage of this TCP IP handshake process by only sending a portion of the packet. Maybe they only send acknowledgement packets or SYNAC packets without a corresponding uh, SYN packet. Usually it's a, a SYN packet sent without, while spoofing the response or the return address for the SYNAC packet, which would cause the SYNAC packet to be sent back to a different host. And you basically, you're using the target's uh, resources, the target's servers to conduct that denial of service attack for you. But if we take a look at the packet itself, and we see different portions here. This is an IPv4 TCP IP packet. We have portions in here to talk about, to discuss the handshake process, discuss what protocols would be used, the encryption, etc within that TCP IP uh, packet itself. And then whenever you're finished with a TCP IP session, you would send an FIN packet to finish the, the connection there. So that's a PC, TCP IP packet or TCP IP uh, session envisioned. Now the other side, not just TCP IP, we also have UDP, User Datagram Protocol. So UDP, as opposed to TCP, is a best effort communication protocol. That means the packets are sent, well, they're not packets, they're sent, um, the packets are sent basically with the best effort in mind. Okay, so there's no, there's no acknowledgement from the other end, you're basically just broadcasting. Think of a radio broadcast, like a radio tower, broadcasting out radio waves. Okay, It's very similar to kind of how UDP works. You just broadcast out your packets. 
If they're received, great. If they're not, you don't really care. <laughs> so uh, UDP is great for multicast. Okay, it's great for time sensitive communication. Uh, it's great for streaming services to ensure that packets are sent continuously in a continuous stream. Now, when I say streaming, I'm not talking about a streaming service like Netflix. I'm talking about a streaming where it's a live broadcast. So like a, a streaming, like if somebody's broadcasting live on YouTube or on Twitch, for example, that would be a live broadcast. So we have a live news broadcast that would be usually over UDP. There's no guarantee that messages are received when sending over UDP. And UDP operates over layers three and four of the OSI model. So common use, as I mentioned, video games, video streaming, a network time protocol, any time sensitive communications. DNS is a big one that uses UDP. And the UDP header is comprised of eight bytes, okay, eight bytes with basically two bytes for the source port or 16 bits, remember, Eight bits equals a byte. So we have, if we had two bytes, we'd have 16 bits. 16 bits for the source port, 16 bits for the destination port, 16 bits uh, for content, 16 bit for the checksum. So let's go ahead and take a look at a UDP packet here. And we'll take a look at DNS. So we have some DNS responses here. I just captured these in the lab environment for this demonstration. If we take a look at the packet itself, our hexadecimal output, we can see we have a source port here, source, and we have a destination here. So we have source, destination. And you gotta remember with hexadecimal, two characters here represent a byte, okay? So if we have two sets of two characters, that's two bytes or 16 bits. Remember one byte is eight bits, so we have 16 bits envisioned here to show us the destination port, 16 bits to show us the source port. And then we have a checksum, but the checksum was unverified, but that's shown here with these two bytes. So you can envision that UDP uh, protocol. Remember, a lot of other protocols will transmit over UDP. So it's not just its own protocol. It's used as a transport mechanism for lots of different communication. Now the difference between UDP and, and TCP, usually when you compare them, TCP is gonna be a little higher latency because you have to have that handshake process. But the advantage with TCP is that you can ensure that your packets are being sent or received at the target. You have that built-in integrity protection with that handshake process. So it's really good for, you know, for watching or accessing web content, for example, to ensure you receive everything correctly. Uh, UDP is fantastic for unicast or, well, multicast mostly. Uh, some unicast streaming service, if we're streaming over uh, like a teleconference or a broadcast would mostly be a multicast. So I say multicast, it's many recipients, multicast. That's where UDP can really be helpful. Also for DNS and network time protocol, as I mentioned, to help both those time sensitive communication. Those, that's TCP and UDP explained. Hopefully that helps your understanding of these two mainstay protocol suites.